In May 2024, the headline inflation rate rose to 33.95%, up from the 33.69% in April. That is um, a 20, uh, 0.26 percentage point increase. Joining me right now to discuss this recent development is international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Thanks for joining us, Mokhtar. Thank you, Justin. All right, let's talk these numbers like we would almost every month. Now, the headline inflation rate increased by 11.54 percentage points from May of last year, uh, reaching 22.41. That's, that's what it was as at that time. But, Mukhtar, what implications can we really draw from this data? You know, in my head, I'm thinking that uh, inflation increased uh, or, or sparked uh, since the May 29 or uh, announcement of fuel uh, subsidy is gone and all of that. And um, ever since then, it's as if we're just going on a nose dive. What is happening, Mokhtar? Um, that shows that um, if you are not in tune with governments, um, you are not in tune with policies, you don't lay the foundation, this is what happened. I said it in your program, Is my good friend Paul Alaje that always says this um, thing, is that if you commit economic sin, you will pay for it that if you commit spiritual sin, you go to the Father, you ask God for forgiveness, God will have mercy upon you. But if you commit economic sin, there is no mercy. So mm -hmm. we have committed an economic sin oh. well, for years back, and we are paying for it hugely now, hugely because we did not even um, uh, plan through um, on how to get out of it. The statement of first subsidy gun was, was, was definitely subsidy was go. I totally agree. I'm an advocate of removal of subsidy. But the timing and the groundwork or the, the, the what was in place was never there. And uh, I'm happy that um, people that were for that policy a long time ago are now beginning to see what, we use, what we've been saying. Mm. Mostly the political class, somebody like Kyle Defire me was saying last week that, yes, the, the removal of subsidy was good. But the timing was wrong. But before then, nobody agreed that the timing was wrong. They said it was the right thing to do, otherwise Nigeria would be bleeding. And I, I, I stand to disagree. If you have the right policy, you take the right decision. Not only that subsidy was gone, that brought us to our near there, we decided to float the currency without having a, 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 a plan in terms of injection of liquidity into the system. And we have seen what that has happened. The Naira have moved from 700 when they came to power to 1,900 and now 1,500. Mm. And then, Justin, you know, I said it on your program a long time ago that we continue to do same or same. And I say this copy and paste and we will not achieve any results. And I know a lot of people thought uh, we're just being, uh, just saying it because uh, we are not working in IMA for World Bank. But finally, the World Bank has come to say the same thing we'll be saying, that mm. if you like hike the rates, it will not bring down inflation. Mm. The, the main cause of our inflationary pressure has nothing to do with all this reduction of liquidity, uh, uh, hiking the rates. Mm. In short, reduction of liquidity will kill one of the most vibrant sectors in the Nigerian economy, which is the informal sector. Mm. Hiking of rates will kill the corporate sector and SMEs that depend on loans from banks. So what we've been doing thus far is just trying to do copy and paste. And that is why in 2022, in mm. 2023, we started with the Americas in high key rate. Today, the inflation has na naturally gone down. Mm. UK inflation has gone down. European nation inflation has gone down. And we are, rather than our own going down, that has been going up. Mm. We talked of African country. We started high key rate the same time with Kenya. Hmm. Kenya inflation is almost getting to a single digit now. Now, what is the root cause of our inflation? Unless we begin to address it. Yeah. We have the root cause of our inflation driven by exchange rate volatility and hike in tariffs for imported, imported goods. And this hike in tariff is also due to exchange rate volatility. Fix your exchange rates. Stabilize your exchange rates. Hmm. Your inflation will go down. Fixed tariff. If tariff is no more dependent on 1,400 today, 1,200 tomorrow, 1,600 tomorrow, fix it like like the 
tax reform committee have proposed. Mm. Let it let tariff be fixed. I tell you, the next time we do the National Bureau of Statistics comes up with their mm. with their data, it will go down. All right. The only good thing we have is we are waiting if it see the light of the day okay. and really what they are saying eventually happen mm. to the um, PMS that will be supplied by Dangote Refinery. Mm, we may see inflation is down. <laughs> All right. But for now, yeah, they need to do the right thing. Okay, but if we look at it month on month, let me just still try to understand the numbers again. Now, the headline inflation rate in May uh, 2024, it decreased um, to about 2.14%. You know, in April, it was uh, it rose by 2.29%. So what caused this um, beat of the decline, and what does this really mean if it's insignificant as it is? Look, when you talk about decline, you, you look at, you say month-to-month -month basis, there's been a decline. Mm. And I keep saying that a decline that will not have impact on food mm. is not going to be, is not a major decline. A decline that will not help grow business is not a major decline. A decline that will not create employment is not a major decline. A decline that will not fix um, uh, um, um, interest rate is not a major decline. So when we talk about decline in terms of year, month to month, and you've said it is, yeah, this is a little margin gain. This is still largely driven by the stability we saw at a point mm. where the exchange rate came uh, 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 a little bit low. But if we continue the way we are doing, we will very, very soon begin to see those declines not happening again because food inflation as of today is 40 percent yeah 40 percent and w if you look at the permutations from the world bank from food and agriculture organization from nigerian farmers association it's not going to get any better so but the only way it could get better is the fundamental cause of food inflation insecurity high cost of transportation high cost of borrowing we will be able to fix this. If we are able to fix it, then food inflation will come down and inflation will naturally come down. Because the key driver of inflation now is food inflation. Mm. And even in the rural area, that's the challenging part. Inflation, still, food inflation still keep going up. So we need to do something about it, not just to celebrate the little uh, de um, deflation that we saw mm. and we begin to say, okay, that means we are doing the right thing. So the next month or two, uh, the the uh, MPC will meet and high rate and kill more businesses. Mm. All right, you've even mentioned food inflation. Um, well, <laughs> it surged to forty point six six percent compared to uh, as of last year. We were at twenty four point eight two percent. Well, it's actually a substantial um, increase. But furthermore, it surpassed uh, you know that of um, last month. But my main concern right now would be that of. Uh, core inflation rate uh, which reached about 27.04 percent marking an increase from 19.83 percent in may last year and 26.84 percent in april so given all of this now what's all this data what today all the implications do they have for rent transportation costs and uh, medical you know you which say, are you, uh, come again you said is it power inflation i, I didn't get that question. core inflation the core inflation okay Yes, core inflation actually uh, stands right now at 27.04%. Consequently, now, this data, you know, prompts us to consider the implications for rent, transportation costs, and medical. What, we, what are we likely to see? Uh, Justin, we've seen it in rent already. <laughs> I mean, you're in Lagos. Uh, a lot of um, uh, um, landlords have hiked their rent by over 50%. In some places, 60%. So they are already playing out. So what, who is going to suffer is because the people are not even any more to meet up with uh, what they have to, to, to pay. Transportation inflation, of course, you know it has gone high, very high, especially in Lagos. Before now, the Lagos state government was subsidizing public transport. Mm. Last month, they said they will no more subsidize public transport. So that has been an increment of 25%. Um, you talk about um, also... Um, Power, uh, or electricity also have gone up by over 200%. If you're in band A and if you're in band B, 
then you, you normally don't see those lights for the 16 to um, 20 hours they, they say they are going to give to you so they give it to ban a so that they can make more profit so what you are seeing you are seeing apartheid in the electricity and then you are seeing a lot of people um, in previously that enjoyed some relatively little electricity are no more having it because concentration should be on band a so mm. that also is driving inflation and you know the manufacturer association of nigeria and Nigeria have also been on the on, 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 on the neck of the government to say that uh, mm. um, businesses are shutting down because of high cost of power. So those are things that are generally driving inflation. But when you look at transportation, though, I, 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 and this government have promised us so much about CMG buses, since the day they came to power, we've not seen it. Mm. Hopefully we'll see before the end of the year that could help bring down transportation inflation. Like I said, the coming on board of Dangote refinery might bring down PMS mm. to a certain level, and that could help also drive down transport costs. So those are the positivity that we are seen in, in going forward. But outside of that, if we talk of housing, the government is not constructing more houses. We are mm. not seeing people paying, uh, people being given attention to, um, we are not seeing people uh, getting mortgages, the banks are not giving short and uh, long term mortgages. What they have is short term short mortgages term. with an interest rate of over over and uh, thirty um, percent. So when you look at housing, when you look at um, uh, uh, and power, which are the key areas in terms of uh, household inflationary pressure, yeah. then you can see that the the, the, the numbers are very right. high. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, move away from inf uh, inflation and talk about the forex market, which you mentioned in passing. No, the official uh, closing rate for the Naira official rate, we know all uh, that is that we have is a 1,483 1, uh, Naira to the dollar. That as at um, Friday, though. Now, following the World Bank's announcement of um, $2.25 billion loan to the country, the Naira has weakened by 5%, dropping from 1,169 uh, to the dollar on April 19 to uh, 1,339 to the dollar on April 26. In my head, I was hoping that with this loan, um, our FX liquidity would be enhanced and also the exchange rate would also be enhanced. But what's really going on? I thought we should have a bit of a um, float right now or some liquidity as it were with the Forex. Well, um, let me use the word of the former, the former minister for, well, I think former minister for works and housing, the, uh, the uh, uh, doctor, uh, doctor Tony Anene. Oh. He said, "Money approved is not money released." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the World Bank have approved. Uh, we need to wait whether they, they've released it. The oh. Approval is different from release. Okay. Uh, release or sometimes takes the six months. Sometimes remember the uh, the uh, Afris Afris Bank uh, uh, money that we got. We thought we'd get it released immediately. It took about three to four months before we got this um, release common strength. So um, we have to wait. But I I, I think um, that will drive down. That will help drive up liquidity in the market. Mm. In the FX market. But it will not just come. But sometimes there's what you call um, market information that try to um, stabilize the market in anticipation of yeah. uh, um, those policy hitting the market. But unfortunately, it's, um, I think the, those in the market seem to be smarter, knowing that uh, what <laughs> we have been doing thus far is a short fix measure, and that cannot be sustained. So what you see is that you see them hold back. At the time you see such policy comes in, and they know that 2.3 billion coming into the, the FX market is just a drop in the mighty ocean, and again, mm -hmm. it, it, it cannot meet most of the legitimate demand because a lot of household products that comes into this country, SMEs depend on S uh, on FX to bring in some of the goods from China or from the United States of America or from Europe. Europe. So there will still be more pressure. The only time we will begin to sustain those, uh, bring down those pressures is one when we begin to attract effects into our economy mm. through uh, uh, Nigeria and the diaspora, long term investment to foreign direct investors, portfolio investors. Uh, and then we, we, then we begin to see 
crude oil remittance All coming right. in, and then we begin to attract efforts also by exporting refined petroleum products, both from NNPC and uh, Dangote refinery. So mm. they wanted those numbers from this clearly fundamental uh, uh, sector okay. begin to come in, then then the market will shiver because that means every legitimate FX demand will be met. All right. And I keep saying it. Before you know that there's liquidity in the system in Nigerian FX market, Justin, in the day that your bank begins to tell you that you can use your Naira card mm. to begin to transact dollar transactions, yes. once that news comes to stream, mm. then there is liquidity. All and right. you will see that FX rate will naturally lose dive. Okay, as we round it off now, let's talk about um, foreign portfolio investors now. People believe, or some people seem to think, that the monetary policies of um, the Central Bank of Nigeria seem to have piqued the interest of foreign portfolio investors. Uh, with new inflows totaling 120.8 billion naira entering the market in April this year, marking the fourth consecutive monthly increase this year. Do you consider this development positive? What is your opinion on this matter? Well, positive to the government because they are attracting FX to stabilize the FX market. Uh, one, 128 million dollars coming in is small, but again, it could also help bring in uh, um, stabilize um, some of this effort. But we have not seen it that, or like you pointed out, we've not seen mm. that despite all these numbers because they see a whole a huge demand for FX. Mm. And now, when efforts come from foreign direct investors or, or foreign portfolio, especially from foreign portfolio investors, that's mm. what we have. It's not something that is substantial because they have, they will call them the hot money. They are out to make the hot money. Now, why are they coming to your market? You need to ask. Why they are coming is because of the kind of interest you pay them in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of treasury, bonds, and all that, because they are ending over 17%. They cannot end that in their own market. So they tend to come in here. And because your exchange rate favors them, also they want to come in. Now, what you tend to gain in attracting foreign investors by hiking rate, then increasing yield on, uh, on, 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 on income, uh, on, uh, um, um, on, on a fixed income market, then you tend to have an effect on your own companies, indigenous companies, because that means cost of funds goes up, and that yeah. means cost of business goes up. So what you think you have gained in one place, you then lose in the other uh, place. And that is what is definitely uh -huh. happening now. So for the government, it could be a good thing that any FX liquidity, but for the business, it's a bad thing because rate is high. And mm. so there's no there's no investment, there's no real core investors, like a core investment of core investors. Yeah. So what you see is that people come in for the hot money and the hot money is, is demand or, or also is being driven by time constraint mm. because they are looking at loan they collect from their countries. So by the time you have any single shake in your economy, then mm. you see them they want to exit almost at the same time. And that also will not create pressure on your effects on the right. FX that you don't have, then you have they have to exit the market market and go with their effects and that also could also help drive up your your effects uh, uh, um, so we need to do the right things and the right thing is to attract more serious minded investors that like foreign direct investors yeah. that are here to stay for the next two to three years or four years or five years mm -hmm. and they are here to create jobs that then and then they are bringing in more effects into the economy then will stabilize with so but when you have foreign portfolio investors whether foreign portfolio investors especially they are here for the short time so mm. the market watch for those short time response speculator takes advantage of this short time response traders take advantage of this short time response but core investors mm. are those that are going to be here for the long term those mm. are the type of people them. you should yeah. be attracted into your market to create stability in your FX market. All right. Thank you so much, Mokta, for all of the wonderful insights that you have provided. Yet again, we do appreciate them. Thank you. All right. That's the size of the show for today. We'll still keep our eye on the economy and see uh, how the developments uh, you know, turn out. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being around.